Strength has never been a foreign concept to me. When I was a kid, I felt at home in my body. It performed for me, setting up a volleyball, sinking a three-pointer, gliding down the lane of a pool, or rounding a corner on a track meet. I was connected to my ability. As a stunt woman, that strength is tested every single day. Whether I'm blown out, thrown down, or launched into the air, I channel the power that I know is deep rooted inside of me. And if I ever lose sight of it, I just look to my son, Matthew, and remember the sheer willpower it took to bring him into this world much less raise him into a young man who exceeds all my expectations despite the immeasurable odds that we have faced. Like being a mother, my desire to work in the entertainment industry just made sense. When I'd watched my grandfather, Michael Jackson's bodyguard, I was enamored. I set my sights on a career in film and television production. It just made sense. Then, when uh, Eric and I started dating, love suddenly made sense too. Eventually, we eloped, and the red carpet of my life, my future, was laid out in front of me. And how lucky I was to know what I wanted to do with my life and who I would do it with. But luck has a way of sneaking out from under you. The first time Eric abused me, I was in college, um, pursuing my dreams. He was in the Marines and um, preparing to deploy, struggling with alcoholism. We were at a party, got in a fight, and I left. And when I returned later to pick him up, he was belligerent. He got in the car, pulled my emergency brake, threw me out, and started kicking the crap out of me. My bare feet, they dragged against the ground, ripping the skin off. I got away and managed to run to my mom's house nearby, but he caught up and tackled me to the ground in front of her yard. By coincidence, two army guys drove by in a truck and, and uh, pulled him off of me. Bleary-eyed and wondering how this had just happened, I pounded on my mom's door, seeking the safety of family. And my 12-year-old sister answered. Eric was arrested and went to jail for three days. The military picked him up, insisting the police department drop the charges. His punishment? 30 days of cleaning the aircraft hangar. I still have the scars on my feet. But then I found out I was pregnant. And suddenly we were fine. That happy family I'd always imagined seemed like a possibility again. I was in school, pregnant with Matthew, hanging lights from a grid, dreaming of all the possibilities of my career and, and of motherhood. And then Eric snapped again, taking his anger about One night, he started jumping on the bed, calling me the N-word, and kicking me in the stomach. I locked him out of the room, packed my bags, grabbed my puppy, jumped out the window, and never looked back. He left for a walk six months after Matthew was born. My life and my body were mine again. 
and I had work to do. I showed up on the set of Ghost Whisperer, my nine-month-old baby in my arms, looking for work. Equally distracted by Matthew's adorable smile and sensing my persistence, they gave me a job as a grip intern. I started gripping for Disney, worked as an editor, dabbled in graphic design. You could say I had just about every position on set. Being the only girl in the grip department meant constantly proving that I was as good as, as strong as, as capable as the rest of the team. But my dad raised a good tomboy. I knew my way around a power tool. My strength was tested, but I persisted because that's what I do, I persist. While Eric was gone, we would Skype and I began to look forward to his return, desperate for a fresh start. When he came back in, in 2008, we gave it a shot. He was my husband, father of my boy. But after another abusive episode, I left and filed for divorce. A year or two later, he, he seemed to be cleaning up his act. And in an attempt to foster some relationship between him and Matthew, we stayed over at his house, Matthew in his bedroom and me on the couch. I woke up to Eric hovering over me, babbling nonsense about our divorce. So I calmly walked to the stairs and searched for Matthew in the bedroom on the floor below. Then I felt a push. And that is the last thing that I remember. I woke up to Eric on top of me choking me and I saw my three-year-old Matthew with a bloody nose and a busted lip. The undercurrent of a mother's insurmountable strength that had now been tried time and time again, I threw Eric off of me, grabbed Matthew and ran out. The cops later broke down his door and he spent four days in jail. It would be easy to quit, to let him win, let the trauma win. But I had a son to look out for, to be a role model for, to raise into the man that I knew he could be. So when in 2015, my best friend's dad, the tactical advisor on uh, Castle, asked me, hey, do you want to get shot today? I said, sure. And that was my first stunt. I rode motorcycles. I used guns, bombed down the mountains on a snowboard. And I quickly realized the market for black stunt women is so small. I had a niche to fill, a duty to perform. I was underestimated first as a woman in a male-dominated field, and then as a black woman. But with every shot, I was helping to make a black actress look badass. There's a lot of pride in that. In December 2018, four days before Christmas, Eric died by suicide. He had turned his life around, gotten the help he needed, and apologized for everything. He and Matthew had been back in each other's lives for only about six months. He was making an effort to be a better dad. I never received child support, but I decided to find out if Matthew was entitled to any benefits or college tuition money. 
was lost looking for answers. That's when I found Naomi and MPTF. When we first met, I felt like I could tell Naomi anything. I had a hard time getting my story out. I didn't want to put down my ex-husband or relive the hell I went through, but she put me at ease. Without her, I would not have been able to get through it. Usually, when you're the victim of domestic violence, people ask, why didn't you leave? She never asked that. She never judged me. She understood I had a child to take care of. Being a military wife, I'd always felt insignificant. When Naomi came along, my hope in humanity was restored. To have someone go out of their way to make sure that me and my kid were okay simply meant the world. Naomi had been doing VA benefits for MPTF for a while, but had never dealt with a death by suicide. But like me, Naomi is not one to give in. She made calls I would have never thought to make. She navigated a world I could never have understood without her. Working together, Naomi and I were eventually able to tell my story to someone at the VA who explained that suicide is considered service-related as long as there is documentation of the history of PTSD. That, my legwork began. Eric's military records listed a low rating of PTSD, something he and the military had always minimized, despite his symptoms being front and center. I was able to get a psychiatrist to sign off on the diagnosis and got in touch with the coroner and the doctor who pronounced Eric dead. Through sheer determination and with Naomi by my side every step of the way, his death certificate was changed to reflect his PTSD. Matthew could now get the survivor benefits that he was entitled to. My son would be taken care of. So our lives continue. I'm assistant coordinating Will Smith's new movie, King Richard, reminding actors where to point their guns and how to fall safely. I continue to challenge myself in this industry, pushing every day As Black women, we face so many hardships in this industry, working day in and day out to find our voice. I love that every day I'm reminded how strong I am despite how much I've endured, that my strength has never left me. My strength, in fact, is now my livelihood. I get to work with Beyond the Combs Academy, helping inner city kids pursue a career in stunts and other parts of production. And of course, I get to pass it on to Matthew. Being a single mom requires more guts, more persistence and toughness than any stunt could. We are best friends. Though being a black mom, that kicks in every so often, reminding him that I am still the boss. Hearing him point to the TV saying, that's my mom on that motorcycle, will never get old but he's becoming his own person now, finding his own independence, not needing me all the time. Mm -mm. I worry, he doesn't, but I see how strong he is too. At Eric's viewing before he took those painful steps to see his dad one last time, he walked around asking everyone else if they were okay. He gave each of them a hug. It's moments like those that I know he'll be all right. I see his maturity. I see his love. I see his strength. Because we're not victims. We're survivors. Thank you, Denai, for telling our story. And thank you, Naomi and MPTF, for being there for us. Uh, Being a single mother in this industry is hard, but having 
this happened to us and, you know, my son losing his father made it a lot harder, but Naomi and MPTF were there for us. And even though this was a tragic incident, um, they are there, even if it's just something small that you need help with. They help everybody in the entertainment industry. And I um, wanted to thank my mom and my sister, my dad, for being there from day one when everything happened. Um, thank my son for being such a strong young man and taking care of everyone else, even in the worst time of his life. He's still worried about everyone else. And I want to thank my mentors um, and boyfriend Matt, um, my best friend Shamar, and Andrea and Victoria for all being there for me and pushing me through everything. And again, thank you, Denai, for telling this story and also for being the actress you are and providing other black stunt women like me with more jobs in this industry. So thank you. So yeah, that's Matthew. <laughs>